Okay, this is the fifth and final soap from this little pastel series I've done. So this is the um, mulberry one that I made. So that's hibiscus on the top. Now the filming of this one went wrong. So I'm just showing you the cut for this. So this is a mulberry, which I then mixed in a little bit of black raspberry vanilla. And this one is... Um, what did I use? I used like a funny, like, oh yeah, burlesque pink from the soapery and then I used lilac from my Kamala for my colours. This one thickened on me really fast after I put in the black raspberry vanilla, but I work with a heavy water discount. So the last time I did black raspberry vanilla, which I have filmed, if you look through the videos, it is there. It accelerated on me, but I do use that hefty water discount and people in the comments on there were like oh it never accelerates for me but I'm thinking well perhaps you don't do a, whisk, a discount I don't know but it is it did for me and it did again yesterday as soon as I added that bit of fragrance just to up the scent into something more berry like it um yeah it went fast on me with this this lilac bit on the top so then I think my is either the battery went or the memory card was full and then I hadn't got time to finish making it and get the memory card back in because this top bit had thickened up. If you look closely, you can see that lilac. It's sort of, you can see that it went really fast. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'll just show you the cut because it's just another one from that little series I was doing. So this is Mulberry. Or whatever I'm going to call it, I still don't know yet. Just make sure that those hibiscus are lined up because I do not want one of those going through my cutter. Okay, that's fine. So it's sort of lightened up on the top, but it's still kind of like a dusky pink inside. It's pretty. Oh God, it smells lovely. So it's mulberry, the fragrance called mulberry, and then the black raspberry vanilla. And I just used a tiny bit of black raspberry vanilla, but I can really smell it in there. But it's just, um, it's almost like a fruity, chewy sweet, you know? Like a frutella, if you're familiar with frutella in your country. It smells like a frutella, or it smells like the taste of a frutella. So yeah, this is mulberry. And I'll show you in a minute how I finish my soaps because I get asked that. And do I trim off the edges? I've, I have showed it before, but I'll show you how I do it with my vegetable peeler in a minute. It's, it's obvious how I do it, but I shall show you anyway. Nice. Again, gelled in the middle. These usually sort themselves out as it starts to cure. This normally fades if I do get gelling in the middle. I don't gel my soaps, I don't cover them. So if they gel, they gel. But I'm not a, uh, I'm not a non-geller and I'm not a geller. I just let them do what they want and I don't cover my soaps up. I always get asked that as well. Do you cover your soaps? No, I do not cover my soaps. I leave them on the counter and they just are what they are. So that's those. And I will show you how I do my edges. And I don't plane them anymore. I used to use a planer, but it is nice when you plane your soaps, but it takes such a long time. And not only that, but you excuse me, you're losing, you know, a few more goes with the bar of soap because you're taking off and trimming off, you know, significant amount really off each side. It is nice to have a really smooth bar, but I don't want to be that wasteful. And I know you can use the soap quills and all that kind of thing, but I really just know I'd rather just the customer have 
the whole bong, you know. So I just take this thing, which I have had for years. If you've watched me, you've seen this thing. I've had it for years and years and years and years and years since I've um, been doing this to my soaps. I mean, back in my kitchen in, in those days, I've had this thing the same, the same one, all that time. So it was worth, uh, worth the money that I paid, which is probably about a pound. <laughs> so yeah, just a regular old vegetable peeler. So that's how I do my, that's how I do my edges, is just trim off every bit. Some people just trim off the sides, but I like to go all the way around. So you've got a nice finish on each edge. I just think it looks a bit better, you know? And it's nicer to use when you're actually in the shower or the bath. I have had soaps where people haven't trimmed the edges and um, where I would probably have thought ages ago that it really didn't matter. When you use one that hasn't been trimmed and it's like rock hard, it actually hurts you. <laughs> it's why I don't do my peaked tops very often anymore because when you first use a soap with a peaked top, like, I mean, when I flip it over like a wave and do that, that style, it's really, really sharp on the skin and it's not very nice. It's not a very nice experience with the first use of the soap. So I only do it on a few, it looks lovely and it's a really nice technique, but yeah, you've got to think of the end user and how it's going to feel when they actually use that soap. So I do like to do this and I do prefer my tops to not be, uh, yeah, sharp. <laughs> it's just not good, is it? Okay, so we'll give them a little trim up. So yeah, I used to, I would sort of used to plane off both sides and I just don't do it anymore. I think it's enough to have these trimmed like this is enough and it's enough work as well. If you've got hundreds of bars to do in a day, then this is enough in itself. But having to plane them all at the same time is just, you don't need to. And after one use, it's smooth anyway. And it just uh, adds a nice rustic touch. So yeah, it doesn't have to, you don't have to strive for that perfectly smooth soap like lots of soapers do. If you don't want to, you just, just do you. Just do what you want to do. You don't have to do anything. You don't even have to do this. You don't have to chamfer edges, but I'm just saying, putting it out there, that in my experience, using other people's soaps where they haven't done this, it does make a difference. And, you know, it's a premium product, really, handmade soap. So there we go, that is Mulberry. So I'll leave pics at the end for you and I will see you next time. I don't know what I'm making next. I shall have a little thinky poos, but uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Ta-ta.